we're so excited to be here. This is our first time ever doing an improv therapy group level three show. Uh, these are the first two groups to go all the way through level three with them. Um, and I have to say, I've just grown particularly fond of these people. I feel like I really know them, even though some of them I have never seen outside of a box. And yet I feel like I truly know and love everybody performing for you tonight. Um, so we're really excited to be doing this. Uh, and um, we're improv therapy group, so we're going to come at it from like a kind of a, a therapy twist. Uh, and part of that is that one of the things we work on in improv is we let go of perfection. So probably tonight's show won't be perfect. At some point, something might freeze or uh, a cat might jump into a, sh to a scene or a naked roommate might walk by. If those things happen, we embrace those things. They might become part of the humor, um, but no need to apologize for them. It just happens. We embrace that imperfection. Um, also, because improv is very like we want you to be part of the show right we're going to need some audience suggestions from you and so we kind of want you to do whatever works for you if you want us to be able to see you and see your smiling faces that's great if you don't have too loud of a place and you want us to be able to hear your laugh we'd love to hear it if you want to give us some fun reactions like applause or look i'm laughing all right you can let us know that way if you want to put nice things in the chat or audience suggestions we definitely want you to feel a part of the show in whatever way works for you um, and we will be coming to you for some audience suggestions so hopefully you'll help me out with that um, all right so we're going to get us started with one of our favorite improv games and it is called late for work we at improv therapy group play this game because it helps us practice our nonverbal communication skills turns out it's also a lot of fun so to get us started we're going to have michelle michelle uh you are going to leave us and the rest of Michelle's team, by the way, the team performing first is called Evidence-Based. Raise your hand if you are part of Evidence-Based. <laughs> All right, this is our Friday morning improv therapy group level three. All right, Michelle is gone. Michelle's in the waiting room. Two, excellent. Two things that she's gonna have to guess. One is why she's late for work today. And the second one is how she got here. So can I get a suggestion from someone as to why Michelle is late? either unmute and tell me or you can put it in the chat she had to fight off a bear all right she had <laughs> fighting with a bear it's late because she was fighting with the bear and then some strange way to get to work some mode of transportation a unicycle a unicycle all right she fought a bear and that's why she's late and she got here on a unicycle uh luckily she's got some helpful co-workers who are going to help her tell the boss all these things uh and the boss is going to be played by rachel rachel all right let's go ahead and bring <laughs> michelle back in okay all right now i gotta make sure i find her i'm embracing Hi, imperfection <laughs> is she at the end so where's my employee all right, we call it. Uh, yep. I'm Wait. bringing her. I'm bringing her to you. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Here she comes. Here she comes. Where has okay. she been? All right. And so the way we do it in improv is if she gets close to guessing, we let her know by snapping. And then she gets it right on. We let her know by clapping. Michelle, the boss is not too happy with you. Michelle, you, you've been late. You've been late every day this week. I mean, this is becoming a problem. I need to know why you're late. Yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh huh, yeah. But a tiger uh, attacked me. What? And it's not a tiger, a bear. No, a polar oh. bear. Oh. oh, oh, a bear, a bear. Yeah, a bear attacked me. Yeah. It, it so, so you were, away. did you, did you like, did you have a tussle with the bear perhaps? Oh, I, I totally had a tussle with the bear. Uh, of course, because you were attacked. We were yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. We were rolling yeah. around. I, I, I did my best, boss. I really did. I really yeah. did my best. Okay, but you know, I, I know that you, you, schedule, you know. You fought this bear, which is great. I mean, I really appreciate your dedication uh, and, you know, what you had to do to get here. But I'm wondering, like, after you fought with this bear, how in the world did you make it here, even though you were late? Great story here. Yeah, I, I flew. No, I, I was oh. on a jet ski. I was on a. We don't have water here. I don't know. It was I hang gliding. I think yeah, I might have been 
<laughs> that seems really adventurous. You know, I wonder if maybe did you know most people get to work on something that has a, a wheels or you know something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like the recumbent bike to. Those are very comfortable. Here. Those are very comfortable. And uh, I put um, it on a. I, I, I'm wondering, you know, sometimes, you know, recumbent bikes, what, they have like two or three wheels. Uh, cars have four wheels. I, I, you know, I don't know, like, how many wheels. That's right. I was on my, uh, I was on my trice, tricycle, I think. And yeah, I, you know, sometimes there are less, fewer wheels. No, no, and it was a, a unicycle. It was a oh, unicycle. Oh, yeah, right. Of course. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you fought off a bear. <laughs> You thought of a bear and you got to work on the unicycle. It makes perfect sense. It's fine. You're fine. Everything's Yay, fine. Yay. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> Great job. All right. Oh, we love that game so much that we're going to do it one more time for you all. And this time Raquel is going to be late for work. So let's send Raquel into the waiting room. Say goodbye. I'm finding her now. Bye, Raquel. And everyone say Bye, bye Raquel. Raquel. I'll see you in a minute. All right. And once again, I need a suggestion for why Raquel is late for work. She slept in. Overslept. All right. And uh, what mode of transportation? A very unusual mode of transportation. A drone. I saw a gondola. I <laughs> also a, saw a gondola. Center. Triceratops. Um, a triceratops. A, this I is my gonna... favorite chat ever. I know, Modern right? Tricycle. This is so much fun. We love you guys. What do you guys want to do? Gondola or triceratops? Gondola. 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 All right. We overslept and we got here on a gondola. That's hey, what Lisa. we want Raquel to say. Hey, Lisa, can you introduce our group? Uh, yes. And the name of this group is the Joy of Pants. Yay. Woo. Pants. Joy of Pants. All right. Bring back Raquel from the Joy of Pants. All right. I'm going to get her. And then I drive her across <laughs> four screens. <laughs> I love when we get this suggestions from the chat that's working. Great. I love, this is the reason that we that, did it this so way. Right. All right. Welcome back, Raquel, but you are late and Angela's the boss, not too happy about it. I'm so sorry. I, I something just held me up this morning. Well, this is not acceptable. Where have you been? Y- yeah, I, I, well, I was, I, I think I was sleeping and then I was, I was, uh, I was in a deep sleep. Uh, no, I was startled. I was, I was stretching. Oh dear, something woke me up. Sound, none of this sounds le- legit. I mean, just, just tell me. I want to be yeah. the kind of boss that you can just tell me. I really <laughs> should not take so many psychedelics. I, uh, I was- We're not judging the amounts or anything like that. Just, you know, what was the, you know, what happened? I, well, I, I, you know, I try to remember. I, I think I was in a coma. Oh, I, I woke up late. That was the thing. Oh, okay. Oh, so why didn't you say I so? I slept. Okay, okay. See, if you just I'm told so me that, sorry. that would have been fine. Okay, well, then how'd you get here? Yeah, let me think about that for a second. I was... Uh, on a canoe, I, or maybe it was more like a, there's uh, no water around here. Come on, how'd you get to work? Uh, I was, I actually, it was more like a skateboard with a stick. What do you call that? I didn't see uh, any of those in the parking lot. I don't believe you. Yes, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing a good job of conveying it. I was rowing. I was. What, what were I no doing? Boat. I I realize that, you know, I was a little hard on you earlier and it might be the reason that you don't want to tell me the truth right now. But like if it's an unconventional way to get to work, like that's okay. If this is what you did when you lived in the mountains and so you decided to do it now, that's okay. You can just tell me. I I really want to be honest with you. I just... It's a little unclear. I was using some sort of stick to propel myself forward, and I. I well, what would you need was, these ways like like sticks, like poles, like? Yeah, I was skiing. I was skiing a well, pole. You didn't ski to work. You didn't ski to work. We no, both know I, you didn't ski to work. I I don't know why I said that. I was. I mean, I can kind of understand. I can kind of understand why you'd want to tell me to ski to work because it's a little easier, I think, than what the truth is. 
Easier than the truth. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know, I don't remember. I have absolutely no idea. I was flailing, swimming. I mean, if you were gone, the it like di da, I di da. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, Huh. Here, here's what I'm wondering. If you're such a big fan of skiing, how you don't ski to the top of the mountain, right? No, you you take the chairlift, uh, or you you cl- you cross country ski, you climb. I, I got you. the chairlift sounds a little bit more realistic. I think I did see one of those those uh, what are those things called? Those chairlift things called what are they? Uh, uh, oh, what was that? Go- I took the gondola. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I remember now. It. The gondola. <laughs> okay, well that makes a lot more sense. That makes so much more sense. Skiing tour, come on, gondola, obviously, I think obviously. Two different kinds of gondolas we had going on. Just some are on the water with the Italian. Okay, so yeah, nice job. Oh, I didn't know there was two types of gondolas. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so that's one of our favorite games called Late for Work. We hope you enjoy learning uh, an improv game you can play at home. Uh, next thing we're going to do for you is a game called Love Letters. And we have two of our players here. We're going to bring up Margo and Dale from the team Evidence Based, our Friday morning team, and they are in love. Um, but they're not human. They are uh, two objects that might love each other, like a salt and pepper shaker or a pair of pants and a belt. Can I get a suggestion from the audience as to what two objects might love each other? Ooh. Uh, come on, chat. Let's do it. Pen and paper. Pen and paper. We're going to hear some love letters between pen and paper. Margo, please start with Dear Pen. Dearest Pen. I've been missing you so much. I'm feeling bare and very, very just blank. I've, when you're not around me, I am just completely blank. Please come back soon. I love you so much. Love, paper. Oh, uh, Unmute, please, Dale. <laughs> okay, there I am. My dearest paper. You know how much I love you because without you, all the power of of the uh, the pen that is more powerful than the sword has has no way to express itself, and uh, and I would have I would have no uh, meaning in, in this life without without you being there for me to uh, express express my. Uh, my ideas and my poetry and and my expressions of love so i need you not only to love but to express my love dear pen i can't tell you how much i love the beautiful color blue that comes out when you're near me it's so exciting (laughs) and i know you can switch to black sometimes as well but the blue is just like it's velvety and the and the nib on the end of you it's so delicious to feel against my smooth beautiful skin of paper i just adore it so much please come home i'm very lonely without you and again i feel like i'm empty i'm devoid i love you so much love paper dear paper do you realize that I am a ballpoint pen? <laughs> I, I have the feeling that <laughs> that uh, your ex- your experience that you were expressing was, was uh, from other, some other kind of writing instrument um, other than myself. I, I don't know what to think about this. Could you, could you please explain? I'd be delighted to explain. You know, I... I certainly abhor typewriters and computers are terrible. And I I used to like the, I used to like a quill. I 
I was in love with the quill. I have to admit before I was in love with the quill, but now it's only you, my darling ballpoint pen. You fit so nicely because sometimes you slide right on the edge of my paper so I can feel you touching me. It's ecstatic. I love you so much. Please don't, don't think ill of me because I get a little confused sometimes, especially when I'm just devoid of anything at all and out here in the universe all alone. Love, okay. love paper. Well, paper, as long as you are willing to let go of the, the magic marker with whom you've had some kind of dalliance, I, I can forgive you and, and I will be willing, willing to take you back and, uh, and express all the, the beautiful emotions and ideas and feelings that I have on you alone, and my dearest see. paper. Yay! A beautiful, beautiful love story between the pen and paper. I love it. Uh, we play that game at Improv Therapy Group uh, to find some, uh, be able to express uh, emotions in a really comedic, low stakes way. All right, we're gonna, <laughs> another one of those, we're going to bring up Barb and Gordon, who are in love. And uh, looking at the suggestions from before, uh, you are a pair of socks. You're a pair of socks that love each other. So we'll hear some love letters between left sock and right sock. Whenever you're ready, Barbara, dear left sock. Dearest right sock, I feel lost without my other sock. We, we're always twisted in a ball together. And then you went into the dryer and you were never seen from again. I don't know where you went. I need... I need to feel that, that, that warm wooliness next to me. I don't know what I'll do without you. Love, love sock. Dear left sock. Yes, I was lost in the dryer and transported to another dimension where the lost socks go. And while I was there, I kept asking, where is my right sock? Where is my right sock? And the ghosts of that dimension looked at me and said, we don't know what you're talking about. I found my way back to a hidden portal. And now I'm stuck under the bed. I'll need you to retrieve me. Love, Right Sock. Dear Right Sock, I must find a way to get out of the drawer and roll down and down the stairs to get you from under the dryer, but I am determined, right, Sock? I will get you because I am not complete without you. I do have a question though. When you were in that other dimension, did you did you meet any other socks that I need to know about? Or am I still your only sock? I still love you, love left sock. Dearest left sock, yes, there were an ocean of socks. I found myself rubbing up against socks of all shapes and sizes, synthetic and natural. It was, it was like nothing I've ever experienced before. And the overwhelm of it nearly overtook me. I nearly stayed. And then I remembered you. And I thought, oh no, not without her, not without my left sock. Love, right sock. Dearest right sock. I, I can understand and I can, I can forgive you for, for being drawn to the other dimension. I'm sure it was very troubling for you. I am, I'm gonna burst out of the drawer right now and I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, right sock. I'm coming for you right now. I will see you shortly, my love. Love, left sock. Dearest left sock, come, come, come now. I need you. I, I need you to, to sock it to me. I, I need you to, to, to bring your, your toe and, and your elastic and, and that hole that person's foot is in. Bring it all to me right now. Love, light sock. And scene. Oh my, that was quite an intense scene. I, I like that very much. Excellent job. <laughs> 
All right, well, you know, uh, that, that was beautiful. The socks got together. It was wonderful. Um, but, you know, uh, relationships are, aren't perfect. And seeing as we are a bunch of therapists, we decided uh, to take this game to a new level that I don't think anyone's done before in improv. And that is um, put the two that did the love letters uh, into couples therapy. So now we're going to have Annika and Miriam play left sock and right sock. And they have come to see Richard, their therapist to talk about some of the problems that might be going on between left sock and right sock. Um, Annika, why don't you start? Okay, so left sock, after you burst out of that drawer and you found me under the bed, I just thought we're a match made forever. But then, you just started to tickle me in all the wrong places. I mean, we're made of the same wooliness, but why does your little wooliness need to always tickle my nose? That's just the part I'm most attracted to, is your nose. So I, go ahead. You know, so I'm so glad you're here because I can feel, you know, the tension kind of in the air a little bit. You seemed a little confused. And, um, you know, sometimes it's helpful to start a therapy session now and just kind of get out kind of what's going on, Annika. And, you know, you did that very well. But I do think it's a little bit different. So I was wondering if you could just each maybe give me one sentence about the most impactful thing when you guys first met. Like, how did you guys meet? Well... I, I jumped out of the dryer and just stuck to her. There wasn't any fabric softener, so we just stuck together. <laughs> and despite the lint and everything, we, we just stayed together. That's awesome. Uh -huh. I, can just, I can just feel the joy that you had back then. And how about for you, Annika? There were sparks flying, you know? Someone tried to separate us. And there are just sparks flying everywhere. I mean, I think they got a little bit of the shock too. <laughs> yeah. And notice how you guys just changed when you started thinking about how you guys met. And, and that's kind of the work I look forward to doing with you guys. And um, I'm just going to hand you something just to close out our session because we're short on time today. So right sock, if you could take this. And left sock, if you can take this. You know, so you have the little P and the little E because you guys have some exercise to do. And, you know, you came in a little bit of hopeless, so I'm gonna hold on to the, oh, bless Stop you. Pulling my nose. <laughs> I can't concentrate, oh, who got what letter, P okay. or E? So you got the P and left side got the E. And so your homework is gonna be at the end of each night, you're gonna describe a characteristic you love about each other starting with that letter. So can we just practice now real quick and just, you know, give me one letter, um, one characteristic or quality that starts with the letter P or E that you love about your partner. And for the rest of the session, I can hold the H and the O for the hope that we spell. And I'll give that back to you when you guys are ready to hold that. So let's close out the session with um, a P and an E. Well, we appreciate I do like all that little pilly. You know, the little pilling on your heel, especially your heel. You know, and it gets it gets more pronounced as the years go on. That little pilling, you know, the thank, wool thank filling up. Thank you for sharing, Annika. Left sock. How about you, right sock? I would have to say it's your very, very even toned skin. You know, some socks have stripes, and but you have that even, even tone, that even solid colored skin. I really like that. I can Beautiful. find you easily. Beautiful. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. All right. And scene. Beautiful. Taking the socks to couples counseling. Nice job. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we have an extra special treat for you all because tonight we have a therapist here who knows everything. Uh, this is a this is therapist know it all. 
and this therapist is going to answer some questions. Uh, did I mention this therapist is three-headed? Yes, this therapist is a three-headed therapist. It's going to be played by members of our evidence-based teams, uh, which is Rachel, Juliana, and Marcella. Excellent. And uh, they are going to introduce themselves, and then they'll take questions, and they will answer your questions because they are a therapist who knows it all. Um, uh, so could you please introduce yourselves to everyone, therapist know-it-all? Hello. My name is <laughs> <I'll come. laughs> I have heard of you, Outcome McGraw. Oh, no wonder you didn't want to tell me at first that was your name because you're quite famous in this land. You are known for outcomes. Excellent. Well, out comes McGraw. Welcome to uh, our show. We're so glad you're here. We're going to ask you a few questions and then we look forward to your answer. Um, audience, would you like to type a question that you would like Outcomes McGraw to answer for you? They are a therapist who knows everything. All right. Uh, who would like to get some advice? Let's see. What is the meaning of life? Outcomes McGraw, what is the meaning of life? Every moment you must open your eyes <laughs> and you might find something new and something old. Oh, that is so wise. Open your eyes and seek the new and the old. Thank you so much. Um, out comes McGraw. Um, how do I get my children to close the cereal box properly? This is a big problem. Please help us, out comes McGraw. Take your hand and fold theirs into a bottle forever. Ah, uh, fold it into the bottle forever. That will cause, solve that problem. Excellent. Um, out comes McGraw. The, the audience wants to know which came first, the chicken or the egg? For many hours and days, I have sometimes cried many ways oh over that question yes i can see it's very emotional for you we're, we're sorry if we hit a sore spot out comes mcgraw let us let us see uh if we have uh some other questions let me scroll up for a moment Let's see, they want to know, why can't I find a parking space? How comes, why can't I find a parking space? Parking may be very, very limited. <laughs> okay, that would be the reason you can't find it's very limited. All right, and finally, the last question we have for you is someone wants to know why they can't find love. Uh, it's Bill. Could you guys, I don't know who Bill is, but Bill wants to know why he can't find love. Can y'all help Bill out? Love takes a lot of consideration and admiration seeking from your truly able heart. Wow, thank you so much, therapist know-it-all. Out comes McGraw. That was played by Rachel, Juliana, and Marcella. <laughs> uh, all right, we are gonna bring up a, a panel of sorts, uh, a panel to give some 
more advice. And uh, this time this panel is, uh, we're gonna get some good advice by a character played by <laughs> Cynthia. Uh, we're gonna get some bad advice from a character played by Richard. And we're gonna get some weird advice from a character played by Susan. This game is called The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. Um, and uh, we are going to have uh, some other members of The Joy of Pants ask them some questions and they will improvise their answers giving us good, bad, and weird advice. Uh, so let's start it off with a character played by Barb. A question for our panel? I do have a question. Excellent. Uh, actually, let me let the panel introduce themselves first. Uh, Dr. Good, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Hello, my name is Dr. Good, and this is my partner, Professor Peanut. We are educated at Harvard, so we know everything, and we know ah, it Hence the good advice. All right. Uh, Master Good, bad, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a master's level clinician and, um, you know, I don't do the doctor thing. And, and I really believe that bad advice is the way to go. That's what's gotten me so far today. Excellent. And uh, Pearl Pendulum, tell us about yourself. My training merges deep dives underwater and a knowledge of sewing pants. Okay, that must come in very handy. Uh, very. So uh, go ahead and uh, ask your question. So I, I come from the old country and in the old country, we think people like you, that uh, if we see you, we might be crazy. So what I want to know is how can I be less crazy? <laughs> right, how can she be less crazy, Dr. Good? Madam, given that you're aware of our existence and you're questioning your sanity, it's proof that you're not crazy. Oh, oh all right, all right. Thank Master you. Good, you. bad, what do you say? Well, I've visited the old country before and, you know, I would just say embrace your craziness. I mean, who really cares? You know, so just just be crazy. Embrace it. I don't know if that's bad advice. I like it. I like it. Um, Pearl, what do you say? Barbara, this is a very, very prickly question. And for this, find a cactus in your country and touch the prickles and you will not be crazy. Very good. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, that was some wonderful advice. Uh, we have some more advice uh, needed from a, a character played by Gordon. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I have, I have no experience in this and I need help in, in beginning to ask for what I need. How do I ask for what I need? good? First, identify what you need. All right, first identify it. That sounds brilliant. Um, Master Good, Bad? Uh, Gordon, we've been over this over and over again. I don't understand why you just, why you keep coming back and asking me for it. I, I don't know what else to do for you, man. Just, just do it. Just do it, man, just do it. All right, Pearl, what do you say? This is a thorny question, Gordon, that obviously you've struggled with. Get a rose, find the thorns, and they will guide you to just saying what you want. Wow, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Get it? You. Get it. <laughs> Yeah, you right. gotta be kidding me. All right, well, we got uh, one more question for you from a character played by Sean. Hey there, I am here to ask advice. Uh, I found a time machine in my backyard and it works. And my evil friend Barney with the eye patch wants to buy it from me. Do I sell it to my evil friend Barney with an eye patch? What do you think, Dr. Good? As long as you eliminate 2020 from the panel, it's okay. It's a good answer. Uh, all right, all right. Um, Master Good, Bad, what do you say? Oh, you definitely sell it, but on one condition, that you go with him. <laughs> uh, um, Pearl, what do you say? You say, bring that time machine over to my place. Yeah, That's all right. 
That's what I say too. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, before we let the three of you go, panel, could you give us your just your final thoughts, your last words, your life slogan? What do you want us to know? What's most important, Doctor Good? Twenty twenty never happened. Oh, okay. Master Good, bad. Never ever listen to Coral Pantaloon. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, first, that hurts my feelings. But when you're diving for pearls, hold your breath. Excellent. Thank you so much, panel. We love the advice from the good, the bad, and the weird. Yay! All right, for our next game, it is called Pocket Line. We're going to send, uh, we're going to, let's send uh, Jess and Claudia. And should we go ahead and send all four of them now? Even though we're, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's send Jess, Claudia, Deb, and Sean all to the waiting room. And we're going to come up with some things that they're going to have to use in the scene, some lines of dialogue. Uh, so you guys don't look in the chat. Um, but please send them away. And if the audience, what I need from you are some famous quotes from movies or song lyrics or some sentence you would like to see them say in the middle of the show. Uh, I will be watching the chat for those. So let's get a few of those gotten down. All right, I'll be back. We got that one. What else? Let's see. Uh, nobody puts baby in the corner. Got it. in the corner. Does someone want to read one to me while I'm doing this? So that it goes a little faster for our awesome play, folks. Play it again, Sam. Play it again, Sam. Excellent. Manic depression has captured my soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. To be, to be or not to be, that's the question. <laughs> Hold on, I'm a little behind you guys. Has I'm captured Batman. I'm a little behind you. So if you want that one in, you're going to have to hold on a minute. I'm still on the soul one. And then what was that for the soul? Captured my soul. Uh, here's Johnny. There's uh, a lot of them, Lisa. How many? There's no, I just someone said one out loud that I was about to write down, but I totally missed it. I got to on be Batman. Or, to be or not to be. Or not to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the one. And I think I only need one more. I Life know. is like a box, box of chocolates. chocolates. Mary and I said it at the same time. <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. All right, we can go ahead and bring them back. Let's go ahead and bring our victims back while I write that. All right, it might take me a minute to drag That's them cool, across cool. four screens. All right, so we play a game like Pocket Line to keep us in the moment, in the now. Uh, in improv, you usually don't know what your scene partner is going to say. Just like in life, we don't know what people are going to say. In this game, they not only don't know what their partner is going to say, they don't even know what they're going to say because they're going to have to use the lines of dialogues that you all have just come up with. Ooh, how fun is that? All right, to get them started, uh, Jess and Claudia are going to do this scene. That's okay. We will do it. I'm embracing imperfection. Yay. <laughs> well, I see Jess. That's good. Okay, I'm good. And Claudia, excellent, excellent. And uh, let's see. So you are each going to do uh, two lines, uh, pocket lines, two each. All right. So watch for those. We're going to do two each. Uh, and we are going to start you off uh, exploring something. What kind of place are Jess and Claudia exploring together? An art museum. An art museum. All right, Jess and Claudia, we now take you to an art museum. Mm. This is all a little derivative, if you ask me. Yeah, I remember asking me. So thanks. Yeah, well, I didn't want to mention it, but now that we're here, I just feel like it needs to be said. I'll be back when I feel like talking to you. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Didn't mean to insult you. Didn't know. Did you paint this art? <laughs> A distant relative many years ago. Ah, well, I wish you would have said something. I wouldn't have uh, been so critical. But now that I look at it again, it actually is growing on me. And you know what? Nobody puts baby in the corner. That's the name of the painting. <laughs> wow. Now I can see? talk to you. <laughs> now that I see it, I can really see it coming to life in front of me. Sorry I was so yes. harsh. 
Well, next time we're gonna find another painting and you're gonna have to find why life is like a box of chocolates in that painting. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did your relative paint that one as well? I don't know. That's a good question. Mm. <laughs> but I do like chocolate. So I love that painting. Play it again, Sam. No, that's not the name of the painting. It's life is like a box of chocolate. And okay, scene. okay. <laughs> All right, and that is popular. Excellent. All right, we love that game so much. We're going to play it for you one more time. We got a few more lines here, too. So we're going to bring up Deb and Sean to give us another game of Pocket Line. And I got four, yep, I got four more lines for you all. Thank you, audience. These are fun. And uh, they need another suggestion, though. Let's give them, uh, oh, they have a very important job. What is the very important job that they have? Uh, audience? They're, they're NASA. Doctors. They're French NASA people. doctors. NASA yeah. doctors. NASA doctors is what I got from that. Um, and by the way, I'm doing this totally random. I don't know which lines are on. It's just totally improv and we'll see what we do with it. All right, NASA doctors, lights up. Pass the wrench, lady. Here's the wrench and you may need the laser too. This is not good. If the air gets in, we're in big trouble. We are in big trouble. And I am Batman, so I can fix anything. Okay, Batman. I heard that before. You said that last week. It didn't work it out worked, there. It worked, right? I, I fixed everything last week. I don't know about this week. I guess you are right, Batman. Rich. You did fix everything last week. It was Superman who broke it this time. Well, yeah. Superman, no. no. Batman, yes. And you are Dr. Man. I am Dr. Man. Manic depression has captured my soul. Oh no! Is there a wrench for that? We need a <laughs> wrench. We need, we need a soul soul flyers or something. Actually, do you have the soul flyers that we had from last week? No, I left them back with Superman. He took them with him when he when he left away. Uh oh, um, we gotta save your soul. What badges. about? We don't need badges. Well, we don't need badges, but we could use a nightstick right now. Do you know if Superman has his nightstick back there? Oh, Superman, nightstick. Here, yes. Here's nightstick, Superman. I'm just going to beat this wrench. Whack it. To about to be is what I'm going to say to this. It's not being. <laughs> it is not being. I agree. <laughs> and see. Adrian, I agree. Yay. Excellent. All right. Well, we have one more uh, game for all of you. So uh, before we do our last one, I just want to like extra shout out to Angela, who's been doing all the crazy, uh, making all the squares look good and running everything. So yay. Thank you. Um, and a huge shout out to both of our teams. Let's hear it for evidence-based. Raise your hand if you're evidence-based, team evidence-based. <laughs> Our Friday morning level three team. And let me see the joy of pants. Let's give it up for the joy of pants, our Tuesday night team. All right. All right, so our last game. Uh, I, I hate raisins. Uh, people who really know me know I don't like raisins. I think wherever there's a raisin, there ought to be a chocolate chip. It's just my thing. It's how I am. Can I get a suggestion of a food you don't like? Anyone have a food they don't like? Other people like it. You don't know why. You, you, just, you just happen to like it. People like it. But, but you're not crazy about it. Tomatoes. All right. Well, this is for, uh, I missed who it was, but we're going to break up with tomatoes. All right. Uh, this game is called It's Not You, It's Me. And we're all just going to come up with some one-liners to break up with tomatoes. Anyone? Uh, Rachel. Uh, tomatoes. It's not you. It's me. My humor is just way too acidic for you. <laughs> Margo. Tomato, it's really me, it's not you, even though you're considered a poison fruit. Ooh. Uh, Richard. Tomato, I think it might be you, but it could be me, but you were so firm when we met and now you're soft and squishy. <laughs> uh, Gordon. Tomato, you're so hothouse and I need homegrown. <laughs> <laughs> Raquel. You know, the problem here is that you're just too thin-skinned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, Cynthia. ELT is so out. I'm going for the bacon, lettuce, and guacamole. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No more tea. Going for the G. Miriam. Tomato. It's not you. It's me. I couldn't find the sauce. <laughs> Deb. Tomato, I am so very sorry, but my heart is with Tommaso. <laughs> you say to so Barbara. Tomato, I'm sorry. It's not you. It's me. I, I really don't know if you're a fruit. <laughs> uh, you're never really sure, right? Any other tomatoes? Oh, uh, Attica. Tomato, it's not you, it's me. I can't stand all the squirting of seeds. Yeah, definitely. I don't know, anyone have an appliance at home that isn't going so well? You'd like to break up with an appliance? Can I get a suggestion for an appliance that you are just done with at your house? Uh, the dishwasher. Can you guys please break up with the dishwasher? It's not you, dishwasher. It's me. Anyone? Yes, Annika. It's not you, dishwasher. It's me. I'm just spun out of shape. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Susan. Dishwasher, it's not you. It's me. I'm going paper. <laughs> yes. Uh, Juliana. Dishwasher, it's not you, it's me. You just don't run hot anymore. Right? <laughs> oh, Richard. Uh, dishwasher, it's not you, it's me. I found hand washing. Oh, ooh. <laughs> Barbara. I'm sorry, dishwasher, it's, it's not you, it's me. You just take too long to dry. Right? Yes, so true. Margo. Dish Dishwasher, it's not you, it's me. It's just the noise I can't take anymore. So noisy. Um, Richard. Dishwasher, it's not you, it's me. I don't know what that smell coming out of you is sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Did I see Miriam? Dishwasher, it's not you, it's me. Your wrinkle just goes on for way too long. Goes on too long. Raquel. Dishwasher, it's not you, it's me. I, I want to fill you up, but it just takes too darn long. It takes too long to fill you up. I just don't know if I can always do it. All right, we're going to get one more. It could be anything at all. Audience, what would you like us to break up with for our final feat of the evening? What do we want to break up with? It's not you, hamster, it's me. <laughs> That's what they want. It's not you, hamster, it's COVID. me. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. It's not you, hamster. It's me. Actually, it's both of us. We just keep going in circles. Right? <laughs> it's not you, hamster. It's me. Who's got one? Barbara. I, I'm sorry, hamster. It's, it's not you. It's me. I just, I, you eat your young. I just can't go with that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Gordon. It's not you, hamster. It's me. I, I thought you were a durable. <laughs> was misled. Oh, Deb. It's not you, hamster. It's me. I really thought I could be a hamster, but I gotta say, I'm a cat, and you look like a snack. <laughs> you look yummy. <laughs> Jess. It's not you, hamster. It's me. You just fit right in that little vacuum tube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Listen. <laughs> Hamster, it's not you. It's me. I'm just not nocturnal. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Oh, hamster, it's that wheel. You keep going round and round and round. And, and I met someone. I met Brian's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hamster, it's you. not you. It's me. You smell just like Brian's girlfriend and it brings back <laughs> bad memories. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Margo. Hamster, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> I'm sorry, hamster. It's not you, it's me, but you just keep eating up all my toilet paper rolls. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, that is our show. Thank you so much for coming to the Zoom improv show. We hope that you had some fun. We hope you learned some fun games to play. And uh, hope you feel pretty good. I feel good. I love you guys. Thank you so much. We right. everybody. Lisa, Lisa, thank you for doing a beautiful job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Lisa and Angela. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank you, audience. Thank you, audience. Thank you all for being here. of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>